Hi, I'm Dave from With All I Have, and this is my review of the Specialized Sequoia Elite. Go, Daddy, go. go. Okay, so this guy here is the Specialized Sequoia Elite. It is a steel uh, gravel touring bike. Um, I'll go into some of the details about it in a moment. Um, I thought fairly appropriate place to review it, seeing as we are in an old quarry. There's a bunch of kangaroos off there in the background. Perfect environment to have a chat about this bike. So starting up at the front end, the bike comes specced with the um, specialized sawtooth 42 millimeter tire. If I dust that off a bit there, you can see it's got a, a um, uh, uh, like that sort of herringbone pattern built in there. The bike has pretty decent clearance those are 42 mil tires you could go uh, actually i do have at home a 2.1 inch 29 er tire to fit in there so we'll see how that goes comes with the um the little mount if you happen to want to put fenders on there 12 mil through axle they do um specialized own uh, adventure road wheels so it's a whole new wheel set they've made the 25 millimeter internal width so they balloon the tires out quite a lot which is really nice i've got those set up tubeless quite easy to set up tubeless right out of the box um, on both sides now there's a carbon fork on this bike both sides of the fork come with those little um the little mounts you can see there so you can mount water bottles um, or i'll do another video on it later there's actually some little racks that they make to fit on there quite nicely um, the, the bars are actually a really cool feature about this. So Specialized has made um, a proper winged bar. If you think along something like the Salsa Cow Chipper bar, so it's slightly flared out on the sides. The difference with this guy is they've got that sort of hover bar. It sits up a little bit. It comes to meet your hands a little bit more. I've changed this one. This one comes with the... What are they, the, the 505 shifters, the BR505 shifters, which like some people call the Shimano 105 sort of level. I've gone up to the, uh, are they 685? Anyway, the Altegra shaped ones. Um, I just find the, um, the fit in the hands a little bit nicer for those guys. Um, now, speaking of mounts, as I was just a minute ago, you can see I've got the two, two water bottle cage mounts on there. They do a little, the crank that you can see just here there's a mount underneath for a water bottle cage underneath the frame um, so for doing a really long distance there's five water bottle mounts on the bike whilst we're talking about it you've got full housing all the way through the bike um, so all your cables are completely wrapped up no exposed cables to get all grit and mud and rubbish on another cool thing about this rig they do the FSA uh, Super Compact or Micro Compact, as some people are calling it, it's a 3248 uh, uh, front chain ring, and they combine that at the back with an 1136 cassette. Um, the, now, Shimano the derailers are designed to go up to 32. You can adjust the B limit screw in to be able to accommodate that, of course. The shifting in the smaller gears isn't as perfect, it's very damn close, but isn't quite as perfect, but you can certainly accommodate that. The bonus of this gearing that I really find and what was really appealing for me for it was that it allowed me to have uh, very close to my road bike gear. So I can have a 4811 for some of the longer descents or, or riding road sections on this bike, but it also allowed me to have very close to a mountain bike gear. So my small gear is a 3236. So on my, uh, on my mountain bike, it's a 3240 is my smallest gear. So I'm literally one gear away from a mountain bike and one gear away from a road bike. And that was a big thing. Like uh, you go away with a, with road gearing, so say a compact and a 32 on the back, and you get some of those steeper and loose pitches you can get when riding gravel, and all of a sudden you're losing a bit of traction. Same thing if you go for mountain bike gearing on some of the flatter roads, you get a bit of a tailwind, a bit of a descent, all of a sudden you're losing you're, uh, you're spinning out too quickly, so this gearing works really well, I personally find. Um, on the Elite model, they use the aluminium seat post. Seat post. If you've got the Expert, that's when they use the carbon. They come with the specialized Phenom saddle, which is a mountain bike saddle. I've changed the model slightly just to go for the one with the uh, titanium rails and the, um, the different surface. Love these saddles in particular. I've got one on my Curve now. They're the same sort of width as a lot of the other specialized saddles, but this, uh, this center channel is a little bit wider. I just find that a little bit more comfortable on my gooch. And they're a little bit longer. Um, so 
just a little bit nicer when you're getting in and out of the saddle just makes it a little bit easier to hop onto the front of the saddle and slide back into the pace well i do anyway um, flat mount disc brakes as you would expect on a bike of this sort of nature 12 mil through axle on the rear all round uh, an excellent bike I've, I've bought this uh, personally to go and do race to the rock i'm hopefully going to do a bunch more videos about it later but in terms of general capability and, and what this bike can do it certainly isn't a hardtail mountain bike with drop bars. Certainly not with these tyres on. I'm, uh, I'm going to ride it with the mountain bike tyres on to find a little bit more about it. But it's certainly a lot more capable than taking out a cyclocross bike. The geometry is nice and relaxed, so it's quite comfortable to be able to ride. I've ridden here, I've ridden to this quarry. I'm in actually a mountain bike park right at the moment. So I got here by riding on some mountain bike trails and gravel roads to, to get in here. On gravel roads, this thing is a dream. Those tires with 30 PSI on them are just lovely. Really nice grip, really lovely. When you get on a mountain bike trail, there's not quite enough grip in those tires. I'll certainly be able to talk about it when I put some, uh, some different, uh, different bags on there. But a um, little bit stiffer handling, but that, that steel has a real springiness to it. It's really interesting. It's my first time riding a steel bike like this off-road, there's a, the, the compliance of being able to absorb a lot of those bumps, some of it with the tyres of course, but when you're hitting those bigger rocks, you can definitely So yesterday I was talking about the compliance of the steel in the frame when my phone cut out, so sorry about that. What I was getting at was the steel has a real springiness to it rather than just directly absorbing the vibration like carbon does or, or titanium does in a way. It, uh, it sort of loads up a bit and you can feel it. It's like it's got a springiness to it. It sort of bounces back a little bit to it. It's a really, really different sort of ride. It makes me um, fairly conscious of what sort of tyre pressures you run. You can see today I have put the 29er tyres in there, so I'll talk a bit more about that another time. But... Um, yeah, definitely uh, the compliance, really decent part of the bike. What Specialized have done here is create a very versatile off-road bike, touring bike. It's very good as a gravel bike. I've ridden it some more on some single track mountain bike trails today. It's really enjoyable to ride there. Uh, look forward to getting some long distance in this bike. Grab this bike if you're after something um, like really capable gravel, particularly if you want to put bigger tires on there. Decent comfort. Um, just a really well thought out, well engineered bike. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe for more. Ta.